Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome. Welcome to the Friday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. I sure hope your week has been going well. I hope you're getting your own personal responsibilities done. But along the way, I hope you're also living out a vibrant spiritual walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you have made time to spend with God every day and with other believers every day. But I also hope that you are involved in rubbing shoulders with people who do not know Christ as Savior yet. I'm going to say more about how you and I can reach out to non-believers here in a moment. But right now, if at all possible, take your Bible and join me as mine sits open to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter 3. Also get something on which you can jot some notes. I'm going to give three key facts that come from our passage today. I'm going to say more about gospel tracts here in a moment, but let me lead into our Bible study this way. How many times have you heard somebody say something like this? Well, the Bible is just so hard to understand. Or maybe they put it this way. Well, I started to read the Bible, but it didn't make sense to me or I got bored with it, so I just quit reading it. Now, if you're like me and you've talked to very many people about the Bible, then you too have heard similar kinds of things. When I hear this kind of stuff being said, I usually follow up and say something to the person like this. Well, okay, let me give you a Bible verse and you tell me whether it's hard to understand. And at that point, I usually quote John 3.16. Well, if the person understands that, then I quote Romans 3.23 and Romans 6.23 and Romans 5.8. Here's what I have discovered. Many people who don't understand the Bible do understand the gospel. They have just never received the gospel and received Christ as Savior. And that is the main reason so many people can't understand the Bible. They reject the parts of the Bible they do understand. Well, let me show you something along those lines here in 2 Peter chapter 3. Get your Bible. Before I begin to read in verses 15 and 16, I want to encourage you to get a free sample pack out of our gospel tracts. One of those tracts is in my hand right now. It's entitled this way, Proclaim Liberty. Proclaim Liberty. Those are the first two words out of a verse here in Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 25 verse 10 says this, Proclaim liberty unto the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. Now, we've taken this verse and used it to talk about the fact that, yes, people want freedom in their land because freedom is wonderful, but real freedom, the tract goes on to say, comes not from having a national or country freedom, but there's freedom in your soul because you're set free from the sinful chains on you, set free from the condemnation of the sin that you've committed, he's been set free by the Lord Jesus Christ. Without Christ as Savior, people are not free. They have a guilty conscience. They have a guilt and fear of death. They lack freedom from coming judgment. They're enslaved by the power of sin. This gospel tract lays out that Christ died on the cross, shed his blood, so that we through him can be saved from our sin, have a clean conscience, have no longer a fear of death. Judgment is gone because Christ paid our sin payment. He was judged on our behalf, and Christ being our Savior breaks the power of sin. We are able now to live lives of righteousness and holiness. Great, great gospel track. On the front cover of it is the picture of the liberty bell. Proclaim liberty. Get the track from us at the end of the broadcast. My announcer will tell you how to get the the track sample packet of tracks from us. He'll give our phone number, our mailing address, email, and so on. 
you can go to our website. Our website there has a way for you to order the sample packet. Our web address is this, Bible Tracks Inc. Dot O-R-G. You know how to spell Bible. I've already spelled the word tracks. The word ink is I-N-C. BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible's open, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 and 16 say this, Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also all in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or twist, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. That's our focus here for today. In my walk through verses 15 and 16, uh, two verses which I've given this title, comradeship, that's the title. In doing that, I've made an outline using four words, all beginning with the letter I, like in the word Indiana. And so far, I've used these three words. I've used the word identification, I've used the word inspiration and the word insightful. Today, I give the fourth and final word, and it's the word ignorant. Ignorant. For us today, we're looking at verse 16, and here's what we're going to find. We're going to answer this question. What does it mean when it says that some things in the Bible are hard to understand? Now, there are three basic facts about reading and understanding the Bible that come to our attention here as we walk through verse 16. Verse 16 opens with a statement about Paul's New Testament books. Those are the books he wrote that we have in your Bible there in the New Testament. He wrote 13 of them. Paul writes about these things. That's the words used there in verse 16. The things that are being referred to are prophetic things, things which Peter has already been talking about here in the chapter. Peter wrote about prophecy. The apostle Paul wrote about prophecy. Obviously, the apostle John, who wrote the book of the Revelation, he wrote about prophecy. Prophecy in the book of Jude, with just one chapter, there's prophecy there. These things being referred to here are prophetic truths. Now, what three facts do we learn about prophecy passages in the New Testament? Here they are. Number one, fact number one is this. Some parts of prophetic New Testament teaching are, actually are, harder to grasp than others. Peter is here admitting for himself that he has had trouble understanding some of the prophecy parts of the Bible. Honestly, friend, that encourages the daylights out of me. The one thing Jesus told his disciples in the book of John, the gospel of John, chapters 14, 15, and 16, is this, that the Holy Spirit would help those disciples understand the scriptures. Well, the Holy Spirit also teaches you and I today the scriptures. But some parts are, to be sure, harder to grasp and fully understand than others. That's fact number one. Fact number two is this. Some believers make it hard on themselves to understand the Bible. Two things that hamper the Bible understanding are mentioned here with these two words in verse 16. Some believers are unlearned and some are unstable. Those are two different kinds of believers, unlearned and unstable. Again, they describe born-again people. To be unlearned means that you are untaught or undiscipled. In the 30 years that I pastored before coming to lead here at Bible Tracks, I met folk who had never been taught, never been discipled, but they wanted to learn. But I also had folk that I met who were untaught and didn't want to be taught. I can't help those people. You know the old statement, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Well, I've met believers like that. The point is, is that being untaught in Scripture basically makes some parts of the Bible very hard to understand. But the other word, the word unstable, refers to saints who are up and down in their walk with Jesus. They are inconsistent. Apostle James, in the book of James chapter 1, calls these kind of people double-minded believers, and they're unstable in all their ways, and that will always hinder Bible understanding. Well, that's fact number two. Some believers make it hard on themselves. 
fact number three coming out of this passage is this. Some people, even Christian people, twist or, listen to my word now, torture parts of prophecy. You heard me. I said the word torture. The word rest, W-R-E-S-T there, means to distort. It means to twist. It's the word that was used of torturing somebody by putting them on a rack. You probably remember from old times back in the 1300s when people were put on the rack. Pulling a person's body out of joint will usually make that person say whatever you want them to say just to make the torture stop. Oh, that's the picture here. Some believers torture some Bible verses and twist them and make them say things that are not really being taught there. This makes the Bible harder to be understood by those people who are sitting under the teaching ministry of these people that are torturing the Bible. You and I know that, for instance, nobody knows the day or the hour that the rapture is going to happen. Yet some Bible teachers, they use some Bible verses and pull on those Bible verses and at least imply that the rapture is going to happen in a certain time and they'll give a few weeks, a few months, and whatever. Now, here is a couple of Bible study rules that you and I need to get down. Rule number one is this. Take the Bible literally. Unless the passage you are reading is obviously using some hyperbole or using a parable of some kind, is using if it's using that kind of language, okay. But unless it's not using that, take the Bible to mean what it says it means. Take the words at their basic meaning. That's rule number one. Here's rule number two. Compare Scripture with other Scripture. It'll be a rare thing for God to speak to an issue only one time. So find the other places in the Bible which talk about the same topic you're reading on and get the whole teaching on the topic from the Bible. Here is uh, one final personal thought on all this. Friend, there are some Bible portions which Mark Smith still does not fully grasp. After studying them for a while, if I still can't be sure what the passage means and what it's all about, I'd put that passage on the back burner of my brain. I then pray and thank the Lord that when I am ready, when I've gone through enough of my own growth and I'm ready, then God will give me the wisdom I need to understand that passage. One of the great gifts God has given to the church are people who have the the gift of pastor and teacher. Pastors are to be apt or capable of instructing others. If you have a pastor who is good at teaching the Bible, you are blessed. That's why, by the way, you need to be a part of a local church, a consistent part of the same local church, one that teaches the Word of God. If you are not, you need to start. How about this Sunday? Find a good Bible teaching, solid church and become part of it help promote the gospel work through that church. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.